Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk Venture, the podcast dedicated to travelers, backpackers and explorers with thousands of stories. My name is Tony and today and for the month of December, I will publish some extracts from previous interview with the guest of Let's Talk Venture in this new format called Short Stories for Big Adventure. So here's an extract from my interview with Anastasia, a Russian girl who's passing by Lyon in France before finishing her trip through Europe. Okay, I, I can tell a funny story about my studies yes. as anthropologist, a funny story about being a teacher, mm -hmm. or a funny story about traveling. Which one do you want? Okay, as you want. Just I, I'm, I'm sure it will be interesting. So okay. Uh, the thing you are interesting about. Okay, I'm gonna tell you about my studies as anthropologist. Yeah. Uh, maybe you know there is such a science uh, like forensic uh, forensic reconstruction. You took a, take a skull of a person yeah, who is long dead, yeah. and you try to reconstruct his or her face. Mm. This method was invented by Russian scientist Gerasimov uh, back in the fifties, yeah. and uh, I used to work in the laboratory, and my teachers were his students. So it was like from the first hand, taking experience from the first hands. And it's a cool, it's, a, it's the creepiest and the coolest place in the world. It's a basement in a living apartment house in Moscow. And you just come there and there are skulls and bones everywhere, real ones from all over the world. People re reconstruct them. Yes, and people, uh, girls I studied with, they just freaked out and I was like, oh my gosh, it's my favorite place now. <laughs> I had my favorite skull, he was my friend. <laughs> he was a Bulgarian guy who lived like 3,000 years ago and he was my friend. Every time I went... 3,000? Yes, he died 3,000 years ago and his skull was on my table and I was like, he was my friend. And I had my own reconstruction. Yes. They gave me a skull of a guy who lived on Chukotka do you know where Chukotka is? No, no. Um, okay, this is Alaska. Yeah. And in front of it, in Russia, Chukotka. Okay. It's like they have a border, a Russian-American mm. border. And he lived there 2,000 years ago. And they gave me his skull and told me, okay, do a reconstruction. And I, I did it for, I was doing it like three weeks, I think. I drew, I, I drew his face. Okay. And actually he had a really interesting face. It wasn't Asian, it was more like Indian. And uh, the girl who uh, made uh, a reconstruction of the, f of the skull found in the same grave, and uh, she made a very similar reconstruction to me, okay. Indian, not an Asian. Okay. And we had a discussion. So first, first um, idea was that this time there were different people living there, more Indian-like, not Asian. Yeah. The other opi opinion was those guys came from America. They okay. traveled through the north and they died in Chicago. So when you say India, Indian from America? Or America, Indian? American, yeah. Okay. He, he had a very typical Indian face. Okay, not He's, Indian from the no, no, India no, no. country. American, okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, very typical Indian face mm. is what I drew. It, it was so interesting. I took this skull, I made uh, I made a picture of it and they, they gave me uh, instruments and uh, schemes uh, yeah. and I needed to like draw a face around the skull. Mm. It's really cool because uh, we have very complicated faces. Every part of our skull, skull has different muscle. Yeah, different tissues. Mm. Yes, and they all have different different size, mm. and you need to know it. And then, then suddenly you see a face yeah. on on a paper. It, it's a real man who lived two thousand years ago, and I have this picture in my apartment now. And it's like, this is, he, and also actually you can learn a lot about a person yeah. studying his skull. For example, I learned he was 40 year old when he died because uh, he, his skull was, uh, had mar special marks yeah. you have when you are 40. Yeah. And uh, he was kind of important guy because his grave was kind of very interesting for archaeologists. <laughs> and uh, then we had, okay, this is my favorite story. I tell it to everyone. Uh, I was I, I came to this place every week and suddenly uh, our tutor called me and said Anastasia we have a problem the fire department came and said that we create a fire fire danger in our basement okay so we need someone we, uh, we need to clean the place but we are all old people we cannot do this 
and I gathered the girl, as girls I studied with, and I said, okay, we, we go there and we clean the place. And actually it was really difficult because there was dust everywhere, a lot of garbage, and these skulls everywhere, but we did it, we spent there like the whole day. And so, and one, and closer to the evening, we opened the wardrobe and we saw like shelves, uh, books, but then we realized that it's only the first layer. It's like two meters deep wardrobe. And there are like so many things. And we started, you know, cleaning it, yeah. trying to find at least, trying to sort the things out. Yeah. And then suddenly I see a bag, like old style bag, like back in the, the Soviet times, very typical big bag, okay. big traveling bag. Okay. And I open it, there are a lot of newspapers, by 80s, I think I spotted there was some years, like 84, 86, something like this, uh, really old. And there was a, a pack of cigarettes, a camel. I open it and there are teeth. And I'm just like, oh my, what, what is this? And I open and I like look at this bag and there are bones, real bones. There and, was a, a dead, of a dead. Yeah, it was a full, full skeleton. In the bag. In, the, in this bag. <laughs> I called the girls and they're like, what, what is what is this? Is this? The skull was broken, like it was, the, the face was broken. Yeah. So I call the teachers, kind of, what is this and what shall we do with this? Yeah. And they're like, we don't know. <laughs> no one, no one opens this bag since Soviet time. They called another guy. What is this? No one knows. They called a woman who had already retired and they asked her, okay, this is the end of the 80s. Wh whose skeleton is this? What is this? And she's like, I have no idea. <laughs> and we're like, okay, uh, okay, let's, let's just put it somewhere. <laughs> okay, we and call, called it a day. And then <laughs> I was like, okay, it's from Europe. It's definitely from Europe because there were posters from Czechoslovakia, okay. Czech, from Czech, Czech Republic. And I, and I thought, okay, maybe they were to, Czech, to, uh, to Prague and they gave them this skeleton to reconstruct. Okay. Because this lab is the best in the world. And, the, uh, and I thought, so maybe they just gave, gave the skeleton and forgot about it. Like Soviet, uh, Soviet time had ended and you know, everyone forgot. I called the teacher and I said, okay, maybe you should contact the museum, the institute, whatever, and said them that we had found your skeleton. And she was like, oh, no, it's, it's perfectly fine. It was a geology expedition. They found a skeleton, called the police. The police said this guy had been dead for centuries. So they took him to Moscow, and now he's there. And I was like, yeah, so you kill a person, you put him in a bed, and then you say that, oh, we found him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess it was a scene of a, scene of a crime. <laughs> Want to hide a dead body? Hide it where a lot of body, okay, dead bodies are. Was it a scene of crime? I don't know. I, I, see, I still believe they killed someone <laughs> and put it in the, in, him into the bag. It's, it's there like, oh, we, it was expedition. They found him in Siberia. Do you realize that one of your teachers may <laughs> Maybe. be a serial killer? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, okay, there are like thousand skulls. Yeah. You, no, one, no one would care. Okay, if there are thousand. And, and I think in this field, you know that if you find uh, a skeleton that is not registered or something like that yeah it, you have a procedure or something like that yeah, to yeah. declare that there will there may be <laughs> it, it's someone maybe someone has been yeah, killed yeah. by someone <laughs> yeah. who's still alive <laughs> yeah there is a yeah, yeah there is a law and we were told on the first year yeah like if you find skull or ball human bones call the police yeah and only the police can tell you uh is it like and the, they didn't contact the police i don't know i don't know they told me uh, Okay, we found this guy, we brought him here, it was in the, 30 years ago, we know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a mystery to me. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I just, like, okay, we have a skeleton and no one knows what it and is. And so, when did it happen? Uh, five years ago. Okay, uh, uh, and so you left uh, after a few months uh, after, so you don't know if they called the police or mm, not? No, 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 I don't think, uh, it's kind of... Okay, let me explain. Uh, it's this place is full of bones and yeah. stars found by archaeologists, mm. and they told me this skeleton is one of them. Okay, but I still believe they killed someone <laughs> because you cannot prove anything yeah, in yeah. this case. It's key. I think guess he's still there in the bag. <laughs> oh, <laughs> A big thanks to Anastasia who has accepted to talk for me during this episode. 
Thanks also to the Alter Hostel and staff for letting me record the podcast. And thank you, you, for listening to it. I highly invite you to listen to the full episode with Anastasia in the previous episode of Let's Talk Venture. You can also find other episodes of the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, PodCloud, the Internet Archive. You can follow my adventure on Instagram and Facebook, and all the links will be in the descriptions. And if you've liked this episode, please share it and talk about it around you. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a thumbs up and five stars. And I see you next Monday.